Okay. For a second, I heard weird dinging, and I was like, what? And then I realized it's just the ice cream truck outside. Uh, but now I'm in a place where I can open up the uh, list of um, political topics of the day. Uh, one of which being some good news. But I want to start with something else. Something where I have actual, like, important stuff to say. And that is that since since people are starting to announce their candidacy in like the the presidential campaigns and and things like that, uh, voting discourse has become a thing again, especially for the left. Um, whatever for whatever reason, I guess through the the I shouldn't say for whatever reason. It's pretty clear why, but the left more so than the right has an aversion. I think, or at least from what I've seen, more so than a right, the right, has an aversion to participating in the electoral system. And this stems from a sort of moral disgust, or a moral, like, rejection of the lesser evil-ism that is inherent to a liberal electoral, uh, well, world. Uh, and of course, I understand that, because, like, you know, when you're learning about the, the state of modern politics and you s begin to see injustices in the world, uh, and then the thing that is advertised as a means of fixing it turns out to just be a, like a smokescreen um, for f forestalling the problem or whatever, uh, that, that makes you pretty pissed and it kind of disillusions you. So I, it's totally understandable and comprehensible why people get turned off from voting when, when they see that there are certain core ways in which the Republican and Democratic parties do not differ in ways that they really should, um, mainly at the federal level, because that's the, the bulk of the politics that we see on TV. That being said, you would be a fool to not vote. That is a degree of political leverage that you can exercise that you should exercise. And as much as it doesn't fix the problem, you should participate insofar as you're able to mitigate the problem, at least on the level of um, the presidency. Now, I have to admit some fault here, because in 2021, the Virginia gubernatorial election happened, and I was partially at fault for the election of G Governor Glenn Youngkin to the, the state of Virginia, to the governorship. Because the Democratic nominee, I was, I was looking at the ballot and the, the options on the ballot, and the Democratic nominee was Terry fucking McAuliffe, right? If you guys aren't, aren't super familiar, some people might not know, you know, people outside the U.S. probably don't know politics at this level, at like the state level. Uh, but Terry McAuliffe was a sort of 1990s holdover uh, in the Democratic Party in terms of the mindset that he brought to politics. You know, he was one of those tough-on-crime uh, Democrats, kind of like... Uh, you know, he, he, he's one of the folks that you might lump in with uh, Mike Bloomberg and Bill Clinton and at least before the his presidency, Joe Biden as well, I would consider to be in this category. And the option was, this was before it had become super clear that the right wing was just going to pivot to trans issues. This was back when, to me at least, Roe v. Wade seemed to be kind of safe, even even if it was on like shaky ground. I was like, there's not, like, you, the Democratic Party has not provided me with an actual, like, compelling reason to vote for Terry McAuliffe in the governor's race. So I ended up voting a third party. I still wanted to vote for somebody that <clears throat> I thought represented my values because I guess you could consider it a little bit LARPy, uh, but I think my mindset was just, look, I'm, I'm trying to communicate what I want out of the political system at this stage. And I think that I need to cast this vote as a way of sending the Democratic Party a message that, like, there are left-leaning voters that you have alienated by running Terry McAuliffe. Whether or not that actually works, I, I unfortunately, I don't think it does because the Democratic Party is so uh, up their own ass. They don't care what left-wing voters think. They just want their guy up there no matter what. So at the end of the day, it really just came down to the two name brand candidates, as it were. And unfortunately, because because I think Terry McAuliffe was such an unappealing option, uh, enough people abstained or voted third party 
that Glenn Youngkin won the uh, campaign. And of course, it didn't help that in addition to being a centrist, uh, Terry McAuliffe was also incompetent. Uh, they campaigned for Glenn Youngkin. They uh, sent out flyers, um, you know, uh, campaign flyers from the Democratic Party saying, oh, Glenn Youngkin is Trump's guy. He's a real Trumper 100% thinking that that would turn people off from voting for Yunkin. See, Glenn Yunkin was not known before that election. They, the Democratic Party, I, I mean no exaggeration when I say this. I, like, granted, I probably should have voted Democrat, but I don't think it would have mattered as much either way. It's just a small blunder on my part. I attribute the bulk of the failure in that election to the Democratic Party for campaigning for the opponent. You know? And, um, you know, the, the, what I'm building up to here is that there are certain situations where I believe, like, there's more flexibility in how you participate in the electoral system, right? Like, if it's a local or even state-level election, you should vote your conscience. You should, you should, um, if you're being presented with an option from your preferred party that is so repulsive that you don't care for it that you think like this might as well not even be a representative of of this party then you should be you should feel comfortable voting for somebody else voting for a candidate that does better represent your values in particular because i think that in its purest form that's sort of what the voting system in politics is supposed to be even though we have a first past the post uh, system but however once you get to the gubernatorial level like i would um like I uh, was voting in in 2021, and especially when you get to the federal and presidential level, you kind of have to participate in uh, the game of lesser evils, simply as as a as a result of how like how much is on the line if the greater evil wins, right? So it to give an example apart from uh, Terry McAuliffe and uh, Glenn Youngkin, because I think that was a foregone conclusion in favor of uh, Glenn Youngkin either way. Can't wait to be gay and do crime on this new ROM hack. True, I have already started doing crime. I've stolen two Pokemon already. I have a uh, a Pidgey and a Bellsprout that I stole from, from uh, well, a young girl and an old man, respectively, because that's how the ranking system works in this game. I'm, I'm a lowly grunt. Can't have my Pokemon yet. I gotta, I gotta steal from the, the lame people. Uh, and this game does have some really cool features outside of that, like physical special split. It's sick. Um, but as I was saying about the electoral system, outside of foregone conclusions, when you get to the, uh, when you get to the state and federal level, to the, like, gubernatorial elections, senate, and House of Representative elections, and especially the presidency, for example, Joe Biden versus Donald Trump, even if there's a more compelling third party candidate, like to be completely frank, Marianne Williamson and Cornell West are two candidates that way better represent uh, what I believe politically than Joe Biden does. And for that reason, of course, I'm going to vote for Marianne Williamson in the Democratic primary, if there is a primary. Um, because in that case, that doesn't that doesn't torpedo the Democratic Party's chances of winning the, the general election. But in the general election, I have to recognize that no matter how many people vote for Cornell West or Marianne Williamson, them winning is not a possibility grounded in reality. Um, so the real options on the table are Donald Trump or Joe Biden. And in that case, it is not even remotely a contest joe biden is vastly preferable out of the two candidates and as much as as uh you know leftists like myself would kind of uh say ew gross at the prospect of joe biden again you know at the end of the day i do kind of have to turn my nose up and vote vote for him which i did in fact in in the uh, 2020 election there i think there was one or two third party candidates there might have been like a green party candidate on the ballot but at the end of the day i was like look this is really this is a fight between trump and biden and if trump wins this is just universally it's not good um so i 
voted for Joe Biden, not because I thought that he would make anything especially better in the country, but because I didn't want things to go to shit as quickly as they would have under Trump. That's the lesson that I think leftists in the United States needs to take. Because in Europe, right, in European countries, if you're, if you're thinking about voting for the Socialist Party, uh, but their platform doesn't seem great, you can vote communist, you can vote green, you can vote social democrat, you can, whatever. There are viable alternatives to any given political party in Europe because there is not the first-past-the-post voting system there. There's a uh, coalition government sort of proportional representation voting, right? But in the United States, we have first-past-the-post voting. So no matter how many votes the you know third-party candidate gets, all it matters, all that matters, is who hits that 50% plus one mark in the uh, in the race. And sometimes, not even then, there are certain states where they don't have uh, second rounds of uh, voting or like a runoff vote. It's just whoever gets a plurality of the vote the first time. So you could have a dozen candidates running, and nobody cracks 10%, and whoever gets that like nine point something percent wins the election. And that's a major problem in the United States. But until we fix it, we gotta live with it. We got to, uh, we have to sort of, we have to make do. And there are there are a large number of leftists on uh, on Twitter, especially because of course where else, um, who haven't yet taken that lesson from things. And I'm I'm gonna be real. Look, it's hard to take that lesson out of things. It fucking hurts, right? Because it it takes acknowledging that like. You, there's a certain degree of political power that you, as a leftist, just don't have in this country. There's a, there's a certain degree of influence that we're just not there yet. So we have to make do with the centrists and the liberals and the occasional social democrat until such time that we can maybe get our foot in the door as leftists with socialists on the local and state level. And then, you know, maybe at the... the um, the federal level, we get some more candidates that actually look like things that we want to vote for, rather than things that we would be forced to vote for, lest we cede ground to fascism. Um, th those are those are the kind of stakes that play in the U.S. Uh, but those are my two thoughts, uh, my two cents. Excuse me, it's more than two thoughts, but uh, that's my two cents on the the current state of of like voting discourse in America. The prospect of real change happening anytime soon for the better is highly hindered by the system when you're a dirty, dirty socialist. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Although I will mention that, you know, I think I've mentioned this before as well. In some states, it's better than others. There are uh, states in the U.S. where the Democratic parties have much more roots in social democratic uh, and socialist movements. For example, in, in a large part of the Rust Belt in like western pennsylvania in michigan in uh, minnesota in wisconsin the democratic party will be more overtly social democratic and sometimes overtly socialist um but in other states the democratic party is much more conservative for example in new york uh, the democratic party is much more in line with what piketty called the brahmin left which is basically they're wealthy elites who are okay with brown people and queer people existing, which is better than wealthy people who are not okay with brown people and queer people existing, but still not great, right? So there's a considerable amount of variation state to state, and you have to use the, the party to infrastructure to your advantage in any way that you can. You know, some states are better than others. Uh, so as far as the current political climate is, uh, is concerned, um, you know, vote Democratic because of the implication of, like, letting the Republicans win or whatever. I'm not going to say vote blue no matter who, because that is a fucking... That leaves a dirty taste in my mouth. And it's from an era when, uh, well, I mean, you, we're still in that era. But it, it was designed to, to basically keep progressives in the party in line so that they didn't issue like primary challenges to democratic candidates in the 1990s you know and that being said climate change no political climate change now we're talking yes i love political climate change i love to change the political climate in ways that uh accelerate the cause of socialism uh 
And that being said, I did vote in in the uh, primary in in my uh, in my local elections, and of course in the upcoming uh, presidential election, I will vote for whoever the Democratic candidate is, and um, it's probably going to be a rematch of Joe Biden versus Donald Trump. You know that'll be unfortunate, but whatever. <laughs>